I always knew I wanted to go in animal science. I, I really thought that I wanted to be a veterinarian, like every freshman animal science major does. And um, But I was on the meat judging team. I wasn't, as a freshman in high school, I wasn't good enough to be on the livestock judging team. I wasn't going to get to participate. And they were needing some extra kids to make a full team for the meats contest, but they only had like a week to train us. And so the ag teacher brought me in and she said, um, you know, would you be interested in doing this? We're going to go to this place called Lubbock, Texas, and and uh, and you could be on the meat judging team. And I said, sure. And she said, okay, well, I've already talked to your mom. Well, you can start practicing tonight. I learned the entire high school meats contest in about three days and went to the area meats contest. And I tell people that's the day that, that changed my life. Just the fact that I might actually be good at something sparked my interest. And so I, I started judging meats. Um, and then I went to Judge Meats in college. I was recruited by Texas Tech to Judge Meats. You know, really, you learn a lot about meats being on the team. You learn about grading and pricing and evaluating. You see a lot of different carcasses. You get in a lot of different plants. But really, you're just scratching the tip of the iceberg. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life when I got to be a senior in, in college. And I kind of considered doing a master's in ag ed and becoming an ag teacher. Um, but I was mentored by Dr. Miller at Texas Tech and he said well you should really consider coaching a meat judging team and and going to school at Kansas State University and I said well okay you know I didn't know any better and so um, he said you should call this guy named John Unruh at Kansas State and so I called up Dr. Unruh and visited with him and I went and and uh, interviewed and that's that's how I ended up going to graduate school it, it was following that meat's direction. On my master's I did beef tenderness research. We were trying to look at different ways to measure uncooked beef tenderness um, in a way that was less um, invasive than the Warner Bratz or Shear Force because the, the, the gold standard of measuring beef tenderness um, is you take a steak and you age it for 14 days and then you cook it to a certain point temperature and then you measure tenderness um, and that was developed in like the 30s by some folks at Kansas State and um, and then the guys at Mark they kind of uh, changed it a little bit where you didn't have to age the steaks as long and you could take a steak off and cook it and then they did a slice shear force method um, but both of those things you were losing the value of that one steak and and you think well one steak out of a beef carcass is not that big of a loss but one steak out of every beef carcass when you're killing thousands of beef carcasses that gets to be a pretty big loss for a company so we were trying to develop a way to measure beef tenderness without having to cook a steak we were trying to look at some raw tenderness measurements and we had some different probes we we had um, a, a plumb bob which is a piece of construction equipment that we poked the meat with and we had um, we had a a three a six prong sharp needle probe that probed into the meat and we did it in different directions and tried to and used color measurements as well to try to um, correlate to uh, taste panels when I did my PhD we started I was taking biochem classes and and um, we started learning about glycolysis you know each enzyme that happens in glycolysis and biochemistry and uh, and I saw that there was a uh, enzyme in the middle of that glycolysis reaction that could be inhibited by citrate. And I thought, well, why aren't we using this citrate inhibition of glycolysis to improve pork quality? Um, because one of our problems with uh, pigs is that they go through glycolysis too fast, your pH declines too quickly, and you have some protein degradation. Um, and so I thought, well, why, why can't we slow that down? And so I went to Dr. Diamond with this idea out of biochem class one day. And it, it was really kind of cool because I took my undergrad learning and one of my favorite days, I can still remember the seat I sat in the day Dr. Miller talked about the conversion of muscle to meat, all the way to my PhD research. And so, well, um, what's been really cool at the University of Arkansas is I've gotten to do lots of different things. When I first started, um, we did some live animal stuff where we were, um, we did uh, some receiving cattle work where we were uh, looking at behavior and um, we fed them some uh, a, a extract or a product called Noni that we were trying to calm those cattle down. And, um, and so we've done everything from live animal and all the way to um, 
ground beef research that we're doing now. Um, we've kind of gotten into the ground beef thing. We've done some um, lean beef trim research. We've done some research where we took that same product, um, Noni, and added it to ground beef. That was kind of a fun project. Um, we're, we're thinking about doing some ground beef freezing stuff. We do research with uh, the bloom development and the way that muscle reacts with oxygen in the air. I enjoy doing this today and that tomorrow and who knows what's going to come next week.